Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic, we are going to introduce the concept of approximating the solution to a nonlinear algebraic equation in one variable. In this topic, we will discuss converting finding a solution to a nonlinear equation into a root finding problem. We will then list the seven techniques we will use to find the roots of a nonlinear expression. We will discuss the halting conditions that are necessary, and we will define both a tangent line and a secant line. Following this, we will describe the standard sine bit function in C++ and the sine function in MATLAB. So we will continue by finding approximations to solutions to a nonlinear equation. And we will do so by converting any nonlinear equation into a root finding problem. We will use seven different approaches for approximating the roots of a nonlinear function. First, we're going to look at Newton's method. And again, it uses a Taylor series to approximate the root. Then there's the bisection method, which is bracketing. The bracketed secant method uses bracketing and linear interpolation, while the secant method simply uses linear interpolation. Mueller's method uses quadratic interpolation, as does the inverse quadratic interpolation method. Finally, however, we will look at the Brent-Decker method. This is a method that combines the second, third, and sixth methods that we've discussed here. Now, all of these techniques are going to use iteration. And if we are using iteration, we must ask, what are the halting conditions going to be? Well, as before, we want to ensure that the step size is sufficiently small. So the distance between successive approximations should be less than some epsilon step size. However, we actually want to make sure that we are close to the actual root. So we should also ensure that the value of the function at the current point is actually sufficiently small. Consequently, we will check to ensure that the absolute value of the function evaluated at this next point is less than some epsilon absolute value. Next, let's review some definitions. A tangent line is a line that touches a curve at a single point. A secant line is one that intersects a curve at two points. Now, from trigonometry, you've heard the terms tangent and secant. So, for example, given a unit circle, these two lines, the x and y axes, are secant lines. They touch the circle at two points. If we have an angle theta that meets the unit circle, then this line here is a tangent line to the circle that happens to intersect the circle at the same point as the angle theta. Consequently, this distance here is by definition tan theta, and this distance here is the complementary tangent of theta. Similarly, this distance here is secant theta, while this distance here is cosecant theta. Now, given a function, a first order Taylor series approximation defines a tangent line to a point on a curve. So for example, at this point, if we 
find the first order Taylor series, we get a tangent line to the curve. Now, first of all, this does assume that the function is differentiable at that point. And also that line may intersect the curve somewhere else, but at the point at which the Taylor series is expanded about, it is tangent to that curve. A linear interpolating polynomial, on the other hand, defines a secant line. So if we have two points, as we see here, and we find a linear interpolating polynomial, that linear interpolating polynomial intersects the curve at two points, and therefore that defines a secant line. Next, we're going to look at a function in the C++ standard template library, and that is the standard sine bit function. This is in the CMath library, which you normally have installed anyway. It returns the sine bit as a Boolean value. Now, you'll recall that if the sine bit is 1, then the number is negative. Consequently, true will be returned. This is also the case if it is negative zero or negative infinity. Otherwise, the sine bit is zero, indicating that the floating point number is positive and a value of false is returned. So this is a little bit awkward. It's basically returning true if the number is negative and false if the number is positive. However, in general, we're actually only going to use this function if we have two variables x and y and we want to determine if they have the same sign. So for example, you could perform a test as follows. If you wanted to exclude the case that x and y were zero, well, you can check that separately. Now in MATLAB, there is the sign function. This function returns zero if the argument is zero, that is plus or minus zero, one if the argument is positive, otherwise it returns negative one, indicating that the argument is negative. Consequently, we can test if two non-zero variables have the same sign with the following conditional statement. Following this topic, you now understand that we are looking at seven root finding techniques, and each uses different tools to find the roots. Each also uses iteration. You understand that there have to be two halting conditions, both of which must be satisfied. We have reviewed the definitions of a tangent line and a secant line, and you are aware of the sine bit function in C++ and the sine function in MATLAB. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!